one of the gifts of being a rector of a church is you have a pulpit and it's yours. And if anyone wants to preach in your pulpit, you get to uh, give it to them. I gave it to the seniors. So just a couple things I want to touch on. Our uh, season is Pentecost. We're just entering it. Those days of uh, Easter and resurrection are behind us. And we are going to put our heads down and continue to work and move forward. As many of you know, um, I have lived in the Twin Cities a good long time in Minneapolis. South Minneapolis has been my home um, when I went off to seminary. I lived in the same house on 33rd and 3rd Avenue in South Minneapolis um, from 1988 to 2001. So those 13 years that I lived there, I would drive to the Cub Food um, in the intersection right by the police precinct. It's where I bought my groceries. It's where I bought my food. It's where I saw the people of my neighborhood. Um, I'm a big Cub Food person. I love it. I love going to grocery stores and haven't had a chance to do that in a long time. But that was my neighborhood grocery store. And uh, I needed something, something like Target. You know, you go to Target, you uh, have intentions of buying one or two things and you somehow spent $125. Um, I don't really miss Target because I was spent way too much money and I'm not really sure what I ever really bought. That Target was burned out and looted this week. And I've watched Minneapolis burn. And I've watched the racial divide in that city that I love blow up. I miss Minneapolis horribly. I don't miss aspects of what it is. It is a very, very white city in a lot of ways. There are people of color, but the segregation is pretty, pretty stark and pretty stark and pretty um, severe. Redlining early on put uh, people in one neighborhood and there were and are boarded up pieces of that everywhere. Back in 2015, a man named Jamar Clark was murdered in uh, police custody and the city kind of blew up. I was there visiting and was out on the streets with my friend Michael Latz and a few others trying to protect protesters, trying to keep things calm. My clergy friends that were out last night doing the same thing. And as much as I don't want to be on the streets anywhere, as much as I'm terrified that I'm going to get a disease that's going to take my breath away, I would have been out there with a mask on, trying to prevent what happened to George Floyd ever, ever happening again. It keeps going on and on. There's a systemic rot in our system. We need to, as a church, start to call out white supremacy. Start to search our own hearts about where whiteness gets in the way of real community and real connection. The work is beginning. I hope, I hope we don't walk away from this. I hope that we realize that these modern day lynchings cannot stand. We need to do something about modern policing. It is not modern. It is ancient. It is back in the history of slave, slave, enslaved people being caught and tracked down by folks. As a kid, I had a set of encyclopedias called Children Childcraft. And I remember the story of the London Bobbies. And I always thought about it that way. That's not where American policing came from. It came from enslaved people trying to run away. It came from gangs in New York taking over. It's in the DNA and we have to do something about it. And one of it is to change our own hearts, to see that whiteness is not where we should put our energy. Our energy as a called people is in the life of Jesus Christ. Our story this, this, this week is from Acts of the Apostles. It is that great story where Peter and the followers are gathered. They want their message heard and they don't know how to get there. They have a story of a man, their teacher, Jesus Christ, who changed the world, at least for them. And they were to carry that story on. 
and they couldn't figure out how to be heard. And the Holy Spirit flew in. Such a loud rush of noise took over the space, allowed them to be heard. It was the festival of Pentecost, and there were Jews from all over. And there's that wonderful passage where it lists all the different places that people are from. And in those places are listed out, and it has stumbled up many a reader in church on Pentecost. But they're understood in their own language. Our call, whatever we believe, is in this Acts reading is that we need to be understood. We need to start to knit closed the divide that we have. In the following weeks, I would love to enter into a conversation about a few of the things that we could do, the things that we must do, and claim as a church, as a majority white church, what we will do to not let this keep happening, the work that we need to do. I hope that you engage this work with me. I hope you follow along with me in this. I hope that you are taking care of yourselves and being gentle. I hope you tune in on Sunday and see our seniors on their Banner Sunday preach. I rejoice on this Sunday that they get to speak what they have to offer the world, but we can't let them do it alone. It's work we have to do too. We have to do it for George and Amon and Bonita and Jordan and Alton and Mike and Sandra Bland and all of them, because this can't stand. It just can't. It is our humanity at stake if we allow this to continue. Like Paul, the scales have been removed from our eyes. Don't let the chance slip by for any of us. Call the question. Help us change the world. Live into the world God wants us to have for us, and for us to bridge that deep chasm. Because I don't think the, world, the Holy Spirit is going to blow in and teach us a new language. We have to learn it ourselves with God's help. Thanks for listening. I hope you're having a good day. Be gentle with yourself. Know that I love you, and that I'm praying for you. Amen.